Hey there, my name is Shane Craddock and this is the Inner Edge podcast where I share a different take on how to lead and live a sustainable high performance life. Over the course of different episodes, I'm going to challenge the belief that tension, stress and struggle are essential to success and creativity. My experience is that there's an easier way, there's a better way and indeed there's an essential way that we need to explore for the times that we live in. So let's go ahead, let's jump in and explore. Hello and welcome to today's episode of The Inner Edge, which I'm calling the myth of working hard. And uh, this episode may challenge you. Let's see, we'll explore. Uh, certainly, you know, I think it's I think it's widely agreed that certain the Western culture, which has become very pervasive culture, so certainly I'm in Ireland and it's very influenced by the US and the UK, um, in particular in terms of an unconscious working approach. And I think there's definitely a culture of long hours that is kind of almost expected. I think it's been exacerbated also by the tech scene where there's kind of an expectation that if you're kind of, you know, in a startup mode or trying to grow, there's just an expectation of long hours. And there's also this kind of, it still lingers in this culture for a lot of people. And I'm dealing mostly with business owners, CEOs. So I can kind of see it, I hear it. Um, where, you know, people aren't seen around the office, well, then maybe they're not being that productive. And I still believe that most leaders unconscious, no matter what they say, the behavior shows that they're more focused at, that on an outcome and just people being present than they are on outcomes. And in the context of the myth of working hard, I believe that we really need to challenge our, our model around are the results that we're seeking to create, are they being backed up by the right approach? And obviously the pandemic is challenging a lot of that. And I think people are seeing as well and and asking good questions around, well, you know, I've enjoyed maybe the balance that I've had. Maybe I can still get results without working so hard, whatever that means to you. But I think there is a lot of unconscious belief around it. So for me, what I've seen from my experience is that we should be fo- more focused on outcomes and not output. And outcomes are all to do with working better working better. Now, some people might say working smarter. That's become a bit of a catchphrase that I hear all the time, especially from people who don't work smart, in my view. So we'll still say working smarter, but I suppose to me, it's 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 working effectively, working continuously better. Now, within uh, working hard, I believe that there's kind, of, there's kind of two main elements. There's kind of a time element, and then there's a stress element. And as somebody who I would say that, being honest, I am, I'm a reformed busy junkie. Um, so I think I'm speaking from experience. I, I have squeezed the mac from, facts for myself. I've been somebody who's worked long hours. I got burnt out. Obviously, if you've listened to this podcast or know me in any way, you know I had in my 20s a severe form of depression. Um, you know, and I think what's coming to mind right now is just even a client a few years ago was a very successful business person who said to me, he said, no, you're very good with your time, but I don't think you're very strategic. And there was a lot of truth to that in different ways. I'm not too sure fully the way he meant, but certainly made me think, which was good. Um, and I remember back in my, in my corporate life, there was a boss there that I very much admired. He was kind of a high achiever, young guy. And I always remember talking to him about his approach. And he said, you know, he said, what I do is I focus on doing what I need to get done so I don't get fired. <laughs> Which sounds a little bit negative, but actually if you drill into it, he wasn't a negative person. In fact, he was the opposite. But that, that's kind of given a, a kind of a key insight into how he was thinking, which was, okay, well, what are the key outcomes I need to get done to protect myself? Now you might, you, you can have angles around, well, maybe he wasn't being big in his thinking, but actually he was. But so his, his words don't completely give the access to the underlying probably truth. So I think that it's worth reflecting, listening to this on, well, what is your belief around success or work? Like, do you believe that you have to get stressed, put in a lot of time, put in a lot of effort, and then you will succeed? And if you don't put in those hours or efforts, you probably won't succeed. Now, there's no doubt about it that time and attention are definitely linked to success. Let's be real about it. We live in a cause and effect world, you know, so time is required. But the way you use that time you know, if you're if you're putting in a lot of stress and effort and long hours without actually really thinking about the sustainability of yourself, of 
how you are as an asset or the goose that lays the golden egg. But we all know now that, you know, that's going to be a problem. Certainly all the stats show that uh, I think it's about two thirds of the, of the working population are, are actually on the verge of burnout. Surely that's not the right model. Um, and all of the research around um, high performance that's coming through over the last five years in particular is showing that very clearly that people work at their best when, they're, when their brain is calm, when their mind is calm. And again, like when you get tired and from that's overdoing it through, through the effort, through the stress, uh, you're more inclined to make mistakes, you're more inclined to make bad decisions. And I, I think we have to ask ourselves, like, is the way that we're working, is it really serving me? And so the way that I work today, is very different to the way I worked even three years ago. Um, I value um, taking pit stops mentally. I value making sure that my mind doesn't get too busy. I my mind still gets busy, but I have to have I, I have different approaches to just say, okay, relax it, calm it down. Um, on the outside looking in, you might say some days Shane is working long hours, other days maybe not. Again, it's all with the view though to um, hitting the outcomes, hitting the outcomes. Right, I thought I'd take the opportunity to promote uh, something that might be of interest and some help to you. Um, if you are maybe interested in leaning in a little bit more for yourself in terms of uh, your own personal and professional development, there's a range of different courses and webinars and recordings of talks that I've done on one part of my website, which is the Online Academy. I'll put the link here in the show notes you can go directly to that but i'm going to promote one of the specific recordings which is a webinar that i did uh, called game changer and the tagline is how to jump start your mindset to lead better reduce stress and get results in uncertain times and essentially over that webinar which is about 45 to 50 minutes long i'm kind of i'm kind of giving my answer to the question like how do you raise your game right now and help your team to do the same, especially in the middle of the unprecedented uncertainty, volatility. And I share some uh, strategies with you in terms of how to set yourself up for success daily in particular, and also how you can impact and inspire your team. So just for listeners of The Inner Edge, I am going to give a, a special discount. It's normally 47 euros um, for the for the moment anyway. Well, I'm not too sure how long we'll do this, but I'll take 30 years off it. So you can get it for 17 euros. If you put in the code EDGE, E-D-G-E in capitals, I think the link I'll add to this um, afterwards in the show notes. If you click on that directly, it should actually have the code in it. But just in case it doesn't, just make sure you put in E-D-G-E, EDGE, and it'll give you 30 euros off the 47 euro price. So you can get it for 17, which in terms of what you get out of the webinar, I can assure you is nothing. Anyway, it might be of interest. Or maybe not. I don't know. But anyway, there you go. Let's get back to the show. And somebody I know very well um, has been uh, very sick, um, unfortunately. And I was chatting to them recently. And they run a business. It's a very successful business. And because, they were, because they're very sick, and when I say sick now, they're very sick, um, they were sharing with me that they were forced to delegate the work because they had to, because they were in at a hospital and they weren't feeling that they, they couldn't just give the time or proper focus. So they, they actually forced themselves to delegate because they had no choice. And so they gave out different work and activities in a way they'd never done before, knowing that it probably wasn't going to be done as well as they would do it. But of course, you're probably going to guess the punchline here. Then they turned around to me and said, you know, it's it's amazing most of the stuff I've delegated has been done well. And it, quote, I never realized it could be so easy and so enjoyable for me to still run the business, but in a very different way. And, you know, he's now not working as hard. Now, in fairness, he has to divert his attention to survival, I guess, and looking after himself. Um, and it's the right thing to do, but he's still running the business. He's still involved day to day in business and the key decisions. But I never realized it could be so easy and enjoyable. And you might be listening to this thing as well, that's ground for him. I'm, I'm not the owner of my business. Or if you are the owner of your business, maybe you should be listening to it. <laughs> but if you're not, um, you know, fair enough. But maybe the mental energy that you're bringing into your work 
is causing you stress unnecessarily or maybe the way you're looking at it through a filter is causing effort or or tiresome the way you're reacting to people so there is a huge inner element to um our approach to life and in particular to work and so if you're not using your inner world correctly i think the outer approach is going to be all effort and so if the out if, you, if you're experiencing a lot of effort or stress in the outer world Usually what people do is they point the finger out, well, I hate my job or I don't like this work or I don't like that person or that person did this to me and I don't like that. And in my world, you see, I'd probably just annoy you because I'd be saying, mm, that's grand. Here's a mirror. Let's look at you. Like, what are you saying to yourself here? What's going on? And so when people talk about working smart, to me, most of the time, it's just words. And uh, I'm probably guilty of that as well, you know, in the past. But what working smart means to me is working, is thinking at a higher level thinking at a higher level if i can think at a higher level it determines the kind of actions that i take and um a story when i was thinking about this podcast episode i can't remember the name of the guy but i remember reading an interview with uh the ceo of the kerry group which is the irish massive food organization so big big organization ceo a lot of responsibility a lot of different facets to it you could spend all your life and every hour of every day working there and still not get enough done but this guy had a very, very, I thought, mature approach and brilliant as a leader to see it. And this is going back, I'd say, 10 years ago. So I'm sure you can figure out if you want to research who the guy was. But he was also very passionate about drama. And the interviewer was saying, like, what's your approach to time? And, he, and he, it was very telling. He just said, he said, well, look, from my point of view, I don't really like to work past 5.30 p.m. or 6 o'clock. I mean, I've got a family, I've got a life, and I've also got a very big passion for amateur dramatics. I'm involved in a local drama group. So I like to get involved in that. And I find if I do that, just I'm, I'm more energetic, I'm refreshed. Um, and so the interviewer, the journalist asked him, well, what's your, what's your view then of people who, you know, stay on late? He said, well, he said, I always think back to somebody who said something to me. He said, if there's, if there's somebody staying late, I always think of two things. One, either they're stealing from me <laughs> or else they're not using their mind correctly. And <laughs> he was saying it tongue in cheek, but the second one is the point is that, you know, is it about long hours? If you're a leader who's actually valuing uh, and rewarding long hours, is that the right thing? I, I just don't believe so. Not, not, certainly not anymore. Not the world we live in. And it's not encouraging creativity or higher intelligence, higher level thinking. It's rewarding the wrong thing. So I think in, in, if you're thinking about it, like what do you believe around work? What do you actually believe around work? And don't be telling me, let's say, well, no, I believe this. Look at your behavior. Look at your actions. What are your What is your behavior actually telling you? Very often the behavior isn't the same to what you're going to answer from your intellect. And then if you're up for it, ask yourself, even if you're a solopreneur or you're a business owner or you're somebody working in a team, like what are the results that you're actually paid to get? Like what are the top results? And so many times with smart people, I'll have conversations, well, are you clear about the outcomes you're supposed to get? 90% of the time, believe it or not, still even today, people won't know. Or they'll say something, I'll say, well, have you checked that with you know, the boss or anybody else, even a mentor, no. So it's really important to kind of get clear on what are your top outcomes, what are the top results, and then work backwards and say, well, what's needed to make those happen? And what you very often find is that, you know, it's the, the shortest distance between two points is a straight line. So if you get clear about what those process actions are, that's where you need to put your attention because so much time is wasted. So much time is wasted by us all on stuff that just is keeping us busy. And that's where the working hard comes in. I might be busy giving hours, sacrificing all that time that I could be given to my health, um, other hobbies to even make me more creative, um, you know, my family, uh, just, just being a better person. So for me, just for what it's worth, I'd much rather have a reputation for getting results than a reputation for working hard. And when it comes to results, time is irrelevant, really. It's it's more about thinking and working clever. And I'm not saying, you know, a good work ethic isn't valuable. It is a good work ethic is great. But for a better overall result and impact, I think a thinking ethic, a higher thinking ethic is more valuable. Thanks for being with me. Bye-bye.